Hotek on Money. We're doing it live here. The 5 o'clock hour in Los Angeles, prime time, Motec on Money, five nights a week for you, live on the air here on 790 KBC, streaming live online worldwide at kbc.com and the on-demand Motec on Money podcast at kbc.com, Apple iTunes, all your favorite podcast platforms, and yeah, on the socials too, at Frank Motec on X, formerly known as Twitter and Instagram. Well, stocks moving higher again today, four winners in a row now following the latest reading on jobs. The private sector employment report came out today showing job creation did slow in the month of August. And this supporting the idea that the Fed might not raise interest rates more at its next meeting coming up next month. Stocks extending the winning streak to four days. Investors focusing on that report from ADP today. The private sector payrolls number rising by 177,000 in August, down from the previous month. Economists had expected a gain of about 200,000. The economy, meanwhile, grew at a somewhat slower 2.1 annual pace in the second quarter. According to the revised report we got today, that was a slight downward revision from the preliminary 2.4% estimate. We're watching uh, what's happening with the hot labor summer continuing. The picket lines continue in front of the major studios here with the media names continuing to be under pressure. Have you noticed gas prices are even higher than they were last year heading into the Labor Day holiday weekend? We have the hurricane moving through the Gulf of Mexico. Oil production impacted there. In the meantime, oil had already been moving up, up around $82 a barrel, and gas prices have been moving higher here in Los Angeles. 537 now the average price for regular gas in LA, 571 now the average price for premium. Both about 10 cents a gallon higher, by the way, than what you were paying last year heading into the Labor Day holiday weekend. And diesel is now up to an eye-popping 5.97 a gallon on average here in L.A. That's more than 30 cents a gallon higher than what uh, truckers were paying just a year ago. I'll be discussing that tonight with prominent gas and oil analyst John Kilduff, oil analyst and founding partner at Again Capital, CNBC contributor and longtime contributor to this program. We're also what's happening with a very interesting new uh, product uh, that's on the store shelves now, very low nicotine cigarettes. I'll talk about that with the CEO of the company that's involved with that. In the meantime, let's get the latest now on your money, the markets, and the economy. And joining us live now, one of the biggest names in the investment world, Paul Dietrich, B. Riley's Wealth Chief Investment Strategist, providing insight and formative analysis of the U.S. and global economies and markets. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Paul Dietrich, for taking the call live with us here this evening. And thank you very much uh, for your latest uh, analysis on the markets uh, and the economy, which you put out to your uh, followers recently on, on social media and on your website. Give us an update on how you see things here at the moment. Well, what we're looking at is that uh, basically last week people were looking at the economic reports that were coming out and they were bad. Uh, and they were driving the market uh, lower. Uh, this week, it seems like bad news is good news. Uh, economic reports, like you mentioned, of GDP going down, being revised down 2.1%, labor going down, consumer conference, confidence going down. We're going to be seeing negative uh, growth reports on manufacturing, uh, all of these things coming up this week. Uh, and the market's going up. Now, why is that? Um, I actually think it doesn't have to do with uh, the U.S. Uh, it really has to do with China, the second largest economy in the world. But right now, or recently, we have been facing, and China has been facing, the greatest economic crisis that we've seen over the last 30 years. And it seemed to be doing, the government seemed to be doing nothing about it. Uh, in the last few days, they have started to take a series of actions uh, to try to, you know, at least revive um, or stop the slide of the Chinese economy. And, um, you know, they probably can stop the slide. Uh, they still have all the underlying elements of an economic crisis. But I think that you know, for global investors, it was a, a breath of relief because had they gone on uh, and we would have seen the second largest economy in the world just tank, uh, that would not have been good for the United States or Europe or Japan or any other place. And so I think that's really why the, the stock market has gone up. Uh, if you're looking in the U.S., you know, we've had now 
15, uh, we've had 15 months of negative uh, growth in uh, earnings. We've also had it in the uh, conference board's leading economic index, uh, which is all the leading economic, um, economic indicators. These are the early warning systems that something bad is happening uh, in the economy and that we're moving from a uh, you know, bull market to a bear market recession. And uh, all those are happening and continue to show uh, a slowing of the economy. Now, a lot of people think, you know, a lot of people would like to see the economy go down quickly so the Federal Reserve would just lower rates. But uh, the problem is, is that it's going down rather slowly, uh, you know, one tenth, two tenths of a percent in terms of inflation and everything else. But we're definitely the long term directional trend of the economy is down toward a recession. And, uh, you know, I don't believe the Fed's going to lower rates anytime soon. They may not raise rates much more, but they're not going to lower them because I think, uh, you know, you're going to talk with someone about um, gas and oil prices uh, later on in this program. But, you know, the, la- the, the reason inflation went down so much last month was largely because uh, oil and gas had gone down so much. Now it's picked back up again. Um, you know, uh, your, uh, West Texas crude is about $80. Uh, Brent oil, the European uh, version, is, is about $84. And because of the war in Ukraine, pr- Food prices are starting to shoot up again, but it, there's a lag of about two or three months before that's included in the inflation numbers. So we know that in the next two or three months, inflation is, is going to start to go back up again. And you can bet once inflation reverses and starts going back up again, there's going to be a hue and cry uh, for the Fed to continue to raise prices uh, raise rates in, in order to contain um, these price increases. On the live with Paul Dietrich, L.A. based to be Riley Wealth's chief investment strategist, and appreciate that uh, thorough analysis. And uh, looks like that AI rally uh, seemed to run out of steam uh, just uh, recently. Uh, of course, uh, Nvidia and those uh, big tech names uh, saw that big. Uh, Caught a lot of wind there on that AI uh, craze. Uh, what about those? Uh, what about Nvidia and the other AI-related stocks? Uh, and what's your view of where that goes from here? Well, l- let me tell you. I mean, AI uh, is going to be one of the biggest changes that any of us will ever see in our lifetime. It's going to be similar to what we saw in the internet in the late '90s and early 2000s. It is going to be massive, but people have to remember the dot-com recession back in 2000, 2001, and 2002, where, you know, there were a lot of companies coming in with these great ideas for the Internet. Almost all of them uh, are defunct uh, or bankrupt uh, today, uh, and, and so that's, that's what we're seeing now, and it's with any really big change. Right now, the only company that's really making money is NVIDIA because it's creating the chips to make uh, AI work. But if you look at, you know, most of the companies that are uh, putting out AI, uh, it's for free. You know, the early really big advances are going to be when you call your airline and you're frustrated that you can't get a human, you're, you're going to get an almost human uh, AI version, but it's essentially free. They're not going to charge you to talk about your booking your flight. Uh, and it's the same way with with Google and, and Microsoft, everything. They're giving this away in their browsers. So investors are looking, where's the money? Where's the earnings? Where are they going to come from? Now, I have no doubt in the future, just like the internet, uh, that we're going to see uh, AI making money. But right now, uh, it's hard to see, and it's and everybody knows that it's not going to happen in the next year or two. 
So that's brought down a lot of the at least earnings expectations of all companies other than NVIDIA. On there live with Paul Dietrich with B. Riley. And let me ask you this, of uh, some interesting uh, downgrades by some of the ratings agency, uh, including uh, some of the banks and, and possibly more coming for uh, some of the big banks. And, and I know you've been following uh, this banking drama that we've seen all year with several big uh, bank failures and so forth. Uh, what about uh, what's happening with the banks at this point? What are your thoughts about investing in these banks? And, and what about the, uh, the other big uh, subject of commercial real estate and, and its um, – Tough time right now. The the meltdown we've seen, uh, especially here uh, in some areas in the Los Angeles area of, of commercial property, even foreclosure sales and so forth, and its impact on the banking sector. Well, people ask me uh, what it is that keeps me up at night uh, that I, you know, it, the, my worst case scenarios. And it is uh, in commercial real estate, not all commercial real estate, but especially the office building market. In New York and L.A., but I, I follow it closely in New York, uh, you know, there are about eight or nine big buildings every week where the owners of those buildings are, are coming in to the bank and they're basically – giving the keys to the building, giving the ownership of the building to the bank because they're saying, look, you know, we're the, the building's 30 to 40 percent empty because of COVID and not back to work uh, type of, uh, uh, you know, issues. And instead of paying a couple of percent to refinance, as we have for the last 20 years, we're now having to pay 8 percent to refinance our building, our business model just simply does not work. And so we're turning it over to you, hoping that the bank will have a, an idea of how to make this thing go. But we can't We the professionals uh, in the business. That's happening in every city in the world. The problem is, is that the big, too big to fail banks like City and uh, uh, other banks like that, they've all marked down the their uh, office uh, leases and, and I mean their office uh, loans that they've made for office office uh, buildings by about thirty to forty one percent, but seventy percent of all office buildings are funded by regional banks and they have a different structure of regulation and almost none of them have actually written down their their banks so you you get a uh, a, a big office building in a major city that all of a sudden uh, is going to the bank and, and saying, we're just, uh, you know, we're defaulting and we're giving you the keys and it's a regional bank. People are going to wonder whether they can get their money out. And the answer is, if you know, since they haven't written down those those leases or those uh, those financings for the to 30, 40 percent. They may not be able to cover um, the, you know, the the consumers' uh, deposits there, and we're going to see a bank run. And you know, we saw it with Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic, partially because of bad management and kind of stupid things they were doing. But this, you know, lending money to office buildings—that's the bread and butter of most banks. And when those things start to fail and they, they count those office, uh, you know, lendings as part of their kind of capital structure, uh, and if they're worth 40 percent less than what they've been reporting, which is what they're doing, uh, the, the investors in these small banks simply don't know the risk that they're taking. And if that happens, you're going to see a run on these banks. And I know the government has run out of money in the FDIC, and I have no doubt that we will print money to cover people who are uh, depositors and who are insured, but those depositors who are not insured, uh, and there are a lot of them we found out with Silicon Valley Bank, uh, those, uh, those, those depositors are going to be sunk. Thank you for that excellent explanation and analysis. We're on the air live with Paul Dietrich with B. Riley Wealth's Chief Investment Strategist is his title there at B. Riley, which is based here in Los Angeles. And let me ask you the big question that we ask uh, on this program. Um, uh, Paul Dietrich, where are you putting money now and or taking it off the table? 
Well, right now, you know, there is no doubt uh, that we are going into a bear market recession. Now, will it be this quarter, next quarter, or the first quarter of, uh, uh, of next year? You know, nobody has a crystal ball for that. But you know what the directional trend of the economy is just by looking at all the leading economic indicators, and it's not good. And, you know, history shows that once you actually go into a recession, which I don't believe we're in yet, but we will sometime soon get go into a recession, that the average drop in the S&P 500 is 36 percent. Now, from the high the last year, you know, we're down five, 10 percent in the S&P. So that means, you know, we have at least another 26 percent to drop if if history is any guide uh, to what happens uh, during a recession. And people forget, you know, most recession, most bull markets last six to 10 years, and, and then they're immediately followed by a recession, which is nine to 12, 15 months uh, on average. And we go through this cycle. We've gone through it for 110 years in the United States. It's a natural cycle. Recessions clean out all the bubbles and excesses of the market. And I don't know why people are afraid of them. But the thing is, you have to act appropriate to the season that you're in. Uh, any farmer can tell you that. And and the thing is, is that right now is a time to preserve your wealth and make sure that you're not going to go down the 26 percent uh, that an average recession would bring right now, uh, given where we are. And so uh, I, I think that, you know, looking at five, six percent in treasuries, uh, is a very, very nice place to be, a very comfortable place to pe- be, uh, to just sit and be patient uh, and wait for the next uh, bull market, which will come. I'm not exactly sure when, but probably at the end of next year sometime. Uh, and when that happens, you know, you want to get right back into the stock market. And, you know, we had this recently from after 2008 we had a 13 year bull market the longest bull market in US history and so you got to expect at some time you're going to have a bear market recession where on average you know the market goes down 36% and uh, and uh, and then we'll start a new bull market cycle that's the way the economy works that's the way it's always worked that's the way it will work in the future. Paul Dietrich, thank you very much for that uh, thorough analysis. You've given us a lot to uh, think about here uh, this evening, and we do appreciate it and look forward to Wish we had more time here now, so I look forward to our next uh, conversation and, and certainly keep us uh, updated on any more uh, papers that you put out and any further analysis. Paul Dietrich, B. Riley, Wealth's Chief Investment Strategist. B. Riley is based here in Los Angeles. Paul Dietrich, thank you very much uh, for taking the call live with us here this evening. Thank you. Folks, Innovation Refunds has been helping small businesses that qualify get a business payroll tax refund through the Employee Retention Credit, also known as the ERC. This is Frank Motek. The ERC is a tax refund for businesses that kept employees on payroll for parts of 2020 and 2021. If you own a business with more than five employees, you could have money waiting for you. The ERC tax filing is complex. Innovation Refunds is dedicated to helping business owners navigate the process. If your business faced challenges during the pandemic that it wouldn't have without pandemic government orders, you might be eligible for a substantial refund. Innovation Refunds has hundreds of five-star reviews on Trustpilot, Google, and they're accredited by the BBB. No upfront fee. They get paid. They don't get paid, that is, unless you get paid. You heard me. Go to innovationrefunds.com to see if you qualify. Innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS. That's 1-843-REFUNDS. R-E-F-U-N-D-S. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. They work with an independent network of tax professionals and will share information with them to evaluate and process your claims. Terms and conditions apply. 790 KBC welcomes the Monkees, celebrated by Mickey Dolans, coming to the Libby Bowl September 15th. Tickets on sale now at AXS.com. Right now, caller 9 wins at 1-888-795-222. Get a pair of tickets to the show. Call now. Caller 9 wins, 1-888-795-222.
Low tackle money continues here in 790 KBC. Stocks racking up gains for the fourth session in a row. That wall of worry being climbed here with the Dow up 37 points today to 34,890. The S&P 500 of 17 and the NASDAQ moved up 75 and a half points. Latest readings on the economy on jobs showed that private sector payrolls rose by 177,000 in the month of August. That was down from what we saw last month, according to ADP, and below what analysts were expecting. Meanwhile, the economy grew at a somewhat slower 2.1 annual rate in the second quarter. According to the revised numbers the government came out with today, we'll be getting the big enchilada of monthly economic reports on Friday, the monthly jobs report from the Labor Department. Looks like boat uh, company stocks sank today. Boat manufacturers and dealers dropped after manufacturer Mastercraft Boat Holdings forecast a steep drop in profit and sales for the year ahead of warned of a soft consumer demand. Shares of Mastercraft down about 13 percent, while its rival marine products dropped 9 percent. Shares of Brunswick Corp., that's the largest publicly listed U.S. boat maker, declined by nearly 5 percent. Rivian Automotive shares moving up about 2.5% after that company sent in a filing that its board had approved an increase in its chief executive R.J. Scaringer's annual base salary to a $1 million from six hundred fifty k effective last Friday. Lyft shares up 8.5% after a lead independent director scooped up a $1 million of the ride-hailing company stock. Taking a look at the uh, cryptos now, we see uh, Bitcoin at the moment. Up about twenty bucks at twenty seven thousand two sixty one. Ethereum is up a dollar to seventeen oh two, and uh, Dogecoin, which has been hovering at around uh, six cents. Let's bring up the uh, latest price here right now at just about seven cents. The price of oil hovering around eighty one dollars a barrel. We'll talk gas and oil prices shortly with oil analyst John Kilda. That and more straight ahead, folks. I'm not exaggerating when I say this. QC Kinetics can change your life. You can live again without that chronic joint pain and without drugs or surgery. It's Frank Motank here. QC Kinetics is advanced regenerative medicine. They take your body's own concentrated healing properties and put them right into your joint to restore and repair that damaged tissue that's causing all that horrible pain. The patient satisfaction reports are absolutely astonishing. Finally, a real alternative to the old ways of dealing with pain. And unlike surgery, no downtime with QC treatments. Now, if you have constant pain in your knees, hips, shoulders, or back, you need to call and get a free consultation from the medical professionals at QC Kinetics right now. Imagine this fall moving around pain-free, doing things you love again, walking, hiking, playing with your grandkids, you name it. Call QC Kinetics and see how the latest advances in precision, regenerative medicine can attack your pain and bring you lasting relief. Call QC Kinetics, locations in Glendale, the city of Orange, Mission Viejo, and now also in Costa Mesa. The number to call is 213-997-PAIN. 213-997-PAIN. Again, that's 213-997-PAIN. Friends, are you looking for legal help you can trust? Look no further than attorney Clark Fielding and the Fielding Law Team, your go-to destination for top-notch personal injury legal representation. Fielding Law understands that life can take unexpected turns and you need a strong legal team to stand by your side. Now, if you've been injured in an accident that was not your fault and need help with a personal injury claim to obtain justice, Fielding Law is here to fight for you. Accidents happen, but you don't have to face the aftermath alone. Fielding Law's experienced attorneys are here to guide you through the legal process and ensure you get the compensation you deserve. Medical bills piling up, lost wages due to injury? Don't worry. Fielding Law specializes in personal injury cases and works tirelessly to recover your losses so you can focus on healing. The Fielding Law team is a proven record of success. They've helped countless clients secure fair settlements and win in court. You can trust Fielding Law to provide you with the best legal representation possible. If Fielding Law takes your case, Clark and his team of sharks will personally work with you, fighting hard for you to receive all the compensation the law allows. Call Fielding Law for a free case evaluation. It costs you nothing to get that honest opinion. And do what I did. Put Clark Fielding's number in your phone under the word accident. Hit it when you need it. 833-88-SHARK. That's 833-88-SHARK. Or go to ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. Motaco Money continues here on 790 KBC at the gas pump. Prices soaring again, in fact, higher than they were at this time last year, heading into the Labor Day holiday weekend. Looks like the average price for regular gas in Los Angeles is now five thirty seven a gallon, five seventy one. Now the average price for premium, both ten cents a gallon higher than last year, and now diesel is up close to six dollars a gallon, more than thirty cents a gallon higher than a year ago. 
Situation uh, getting worse with that storm uh, roaring through the Gulf of Mexico, and that's disrupted gas and oil production there. Let's talk about what's happening now with prominent gas and oil analyst John Kilduff, oil analyst and founding partner to Gen Capital, CNBC contributor and longtime contributor to this program. John Kilduff, great to have you back with us here. Thank you very much uh, for taking the call and give us an update on what's happening to cause this uh, pain at the pump here. My pleasure to be on with you, Frank. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, pardon the pun, but it is the perfect storm. Uh, between that crazy storm that just ran up the West Coast towards you guys and now this uh, episode here in the in the Gulf of Mexico that has now taken that right turn towards Florida, um, you know, a lot of angst in the market. And, of course, the timing couldn't be worse in terms of the holiday weekend. Um, this is the last hurrah unofficially for summer. So you're seeing uh, gasoline stations across the country sort of top up their tanks uh, in advance of the demand that's coming. So that's pushing prices up. Uh, but also, too, uh, the uh, situation we have going on with Saudi Arabia and, and what they're doing in terms of trying to drain the global supply of crude oil. Uh, they are producing and exporting at the uh, lowest amounts they probably have in decades to put it in perspective, Saudi Arabia is, is exporting about 7 million barrels of oil a day. Right now, the United States is exporting about 4.5 million barrels a day because of all the production that's gone on over the past couple of years now, particularly uh, in the Permian. So uh, the Saudis are really trying to uh, to stick it to us, and our economy is strong enough where demand is uh, helping to keep prices aloft. Uh, the only thing consumers right now have going for them in terms of these prices not running away to the upside to, to 90 to 100 is the uh, poor economic situation in, in China. And uh, that's what's holding things back. So it's a it's it's a real cauldron right now. And uh, the roulette ball is spinning around and it could go really either way. I don't see prices spiking higher towards 100, but it is a real possibility at this point. On the are live with oil analyst John Kilduff. And, and John, let me ask you this. Uh, remember, they tried to uh, get the price of gas and oil down by depleting pretty much the strategic uh, petroleum reserve. And uh, what about that? Uh, what uh, what recourse do we have to fight these, um, these high uh, gas and oil prices at this point? Not much, Frank. I mean, it, it, it would be hard pressed. It would we're, we're, we'd be in dangerous territory now, I think, to go much more into the SPR. Um, I didn't have that much of a problem with using it uh, when we did, given you know the outbreak of the war, the fears over the lost Russian uh, supplies of crude oil and refined products. But uh, but at this point, uh, it, it is an issue, and we're out of bullets basically on that one. So. Uh, basically, right now, what uh, we need to do is for uh, Saudi Arabia, first of all, to realize that much higher prices aren't in their best interest as much as they may think so, because it will curtail demand even further, particularly in China, because the Chinese are kind of wily in this regard. Uh, you might have heard a couple of months ago, China imported a record amount of crude oil. Well, that was because it was cheap and they stockpiled it. So what are they doing now? Now they've cut back on their imports and they're draining uh, those supplies. So they're, they're fighting back. So it, the, the game for the Saudis isn't as easy as they think it is. Uh, so that's why you're seeing this sort of equilibrium that we're at, at an unfortunately elevated price of about $80 a barrel for WTI, which translates, uh, unfortunately, into 5 and $6 a gallon gasoline for you guys on the West Coast and about $4 a gallon anymore for the rest of the country. Uh, which hurts? Which hurts? Yeah, I just looked it up. At three eighty-three, by the way, is the national average gas price. We're at five thirty-seven a gallon here in the Los Angeles area, mercifully uh, below the six forty-nine a gallon we were paying last October due to uh, refinery issues here uh, in California at the time. What about uh, the refinery issues uh, this time, uh, John? I know you uh, track what's happening here very closely. Uh, it's been said for decades that, well, we need to build more refineries to get the gas prices down, and it looks like that is never going to happen at this point. Um, what is the, the refinery situation here at this moment? Yeah, that is never going to happen. The only thing we have is that ExxonMobil, God bless them, uh, uh, built out 500,000 barrels of extra capacity in one of their existing refineries over the course of this past year. Uh, the other problem we're having is this heat uh, these refiners strain uh, under this heat dome that's persisted in the middle of the country really all summer. 
you know, they're just not built for this persistent 95 100 degree Fahrenheit temperature. So they're running at reduced rates. So we are seeing gasoline even inventories fall. Same thing out in California. Storm caused the refineries out your way to batten down the hatches because they're just simply not built or prepared for any kind of a storm like that. The Santa Ana winds, some of the other storms you get, you know, just don't compare to an organized storm that just came up from uh, from the Baja coast there and uh, and, and, and scraped your 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 facility so so you're going to have even tighter supplies so mother nature's uh, been consistently working against us and unfortunately it's going to keep the uh, price of gasoline here aloft at least for the next few weeks uh, until we get past labor day and, and people settle into their school schedules and and we should get something of a break but then we'll be looking at the winter season and again more pressure so there's not a lot of relief on the horizon frank unfortunately we focus on the uh, Main Street economy here uh, and the consumer. But what about from an investment uh, standpoint, um, given uh, what's happening here with the gas and oil prices, uh, where would you be uh, placing your bets at this point? Buy any, on any pullback, Frank, especially the refiners. There's just not enough refining capacity, as we just talked about. None's going to be built. So, I mean, buy Valero. But also you can buy ExxonMobil. You can buy Chevron. They have substantial uh, refining uh, exposure. Also, too, ExxonMobil and Hess uh, have uh, are now in the produ- are in the process of really ramping up production in a country called uh, Guyana, which is next door to Venezuela, and hundreds of thousands. It's going to go over a million barrels a day of production. Um, also, too, the smaller uh, energy companies like Pioneer, uh, they are producing oil at eighty dollars a barrel. They have gotten their break-even costs in the Permian down to nineteen dollars a barrel. They are minting money. So take a good look at the local producers down that way, like Pioneer, like EOG Resources, uh, and uh, and particularly Pioneer because they have a setup where uh, they're returning dollars uh, in in terms of special dividends uh, to their investors uh, aside from everything else they're doing. John, thank you very much uh, for taking the call here this evening. We wish you a great uh, Labor Day holiday weekend and look forward to staying in touch with you with all that's uh, going on here. That is prominent gas and oil analyst John Kilduff, oil analyst and founding partner at Again Capital, longtime CNBC contributor and probably even longer contributor to this program over decades now. John, thank you very much uh, and have a wonderful evening. My pleasure, Frank. Thank you. As Frank Motek here, Inve- Innovation Refunds has been helping small businesses that qualify get a business payroll tax refund through the Employee Retention Credit, also known as the ERC. The ERC is a tax refund for businesses that kept employees on payroll for parts of the year 2020 and 2021. Now, if you own a business with more than five employees, you could have money waiting for you. They understand the importance of your information and have industry standard certifications to back it up. If your business faced challenges during the pandemic that it would not have without pandemic government orders, you may be eligible for a substantial refund. Go to innovationrefunds.com to see if you qualify. Innovation Refunds has hundreds of five-star reviews on Trustpilot, Google, and they're accredited by the BBB. There's no upfront fee. They do not get paid unless you get paid. InnovationRefunds.com. That's the website, InnovationRefunds.com. Or call 843-REFUNDS. That's 1-843-REFUNDS. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. They work with an independent network of tax professionals and will share information with them to evaluate and process your claims. Terms and conditions apply. Motec on Money continues here in 790 KABC. As you first heard here on Motec on Money, Californians have a new alternative to traditional cigarettes, a new low nicotine, very low nicotine, as a matter of fact, cigarette, the first ever reduced nicotine combustible cigarette has come to the California market recently. And uh, let's bring in John Miller now with 22nd Century Group. He's the president of their tobacco division. John Miller, thank you very much uh, for taking the call here. Tell us about this uh, new product, which recently hit the store shelves here in California. Yeah, hello, Frank. Great to be here with you and to spend some time with your listeners to talk about this revolutionary and disruptive new product, uh, VLN. Um, Our product, uh, VLN, has the only modified risk tobacco product designation from the FDA. And we launched this product in California a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was it's great to be in the market. Uh, California is such an important market uh, for so many reasons. Um, we've launched in 7-Eleven there, we're in GNM Oil, 
Uh, we have about 12 different distributors now in Southern California. We're estimating to be in about six to 700 more stores uh, throughout the third and fourth quarter. So we're really bringing uh, a solutions-based product to a market that still has, believe it or not, you know, six to 10% of the population still smokes in California, somewhere between two and a half to three million smokers. So we're able to bring VLN there and this FDA uh, authorized product to help people smoke less. It was big news, certainly, when the FDA <clears throat> approved the product and the fact that it's here in California is very significant. And the idea essentially is to help people uh, quit smoking ultimately, right? Absolutely, uh, Frank. It was big news when the, when the FDA designated this as a modified risk tobacco product. Most people don't know, but if you have an MRTP designation from the FDA, they give that really in the protection of public health. So it's geared to help people. We still know that 60 to 70 percent of the people who smoke, and regardless of all the warnings, all the information out there, all the science, 60 to 70 percent of the people are still looking for that solution they haven't been able to find. And VLN with our very low nicotine cigarettes provides that solution. And it, and it does it, Frank, in, in a way that is so accessible and understandable to the current adult smoker. <clears throat> a lot of the different products that are out there today, and whether it's a gum or a patch or whatever, it doesn't really resonate with a smoker. VLN feels, looks, smells, tastes like a regular cigarette because it is. Um, 22nd Century is, is a, is a bioagricultural science company. We were able to grow tobacco plants with almost no nicotine. So the product that was produced off of all of this intellectual property, off all the patents, off all the science, is so familiar to people that as they use it, they are then able to deal with their nicotine addiction. And then, which is just as important, they have to deal with the act of smoking. And that's what this product does. And that's what we're bringing to consumers in California and, and about 17 other states as well. But that's what we're bringing to people as, as a revolutionary solution uh, to this uh, ongoing problem of people smoking. On the live with John Miller, 22nd Century Group President, Tobacco <clears throat> Division. And so people, uh, for people looking for this product uh, in the stores you mentioned, uh, they'll be looking for uh, VLN King Cigarettes. Is, is that the, uh, the marketing? Is that the name of the product? Correct. We have VLN King. Our regular flavor is in, which is a regular tobacco uh, flavor, is in California. Um, again, you know, California has been out in front of so many, uh, of so much progressive uh, tobacco regulations. Uh, just recently, as an example, right, they banned menthol cigarettes. Uh, they banned flavored nicotine. They banned flavored cigars. Um, so right now we only have one product in California. But as I look at, you know, the way California has progressed throughout, you know, the history of regulation, uh, I feel there's an opportunity that maybe our menthol uh, will be given an exemption in the state. And again, primarily because then you have a, a full 360 degree solution for the menthol smoker. We know now that, you know, 55% of menthol smokers, if not given an off ramp product, will just switch to another type of cigarette. VLN Menthol gives that smoker an opportunity to have an off-ramp product um, and, and then be able to cycle off uh, smoking altogether. Um, but right now we have the one product. Uh, we also know that you know, the FDA is considering a low nicotine mandate for the entire country. And for anyone who doesn't know what that's about, the FDA, which who regulates the tobacco industry, is looking at instilling a low nicotine standard across the country in the United States. They've talked about it. They've got the rulemaking process in progress, and we're expecting FDA to make an announcement on the low nicotine standard by the end of the year. If that happens, the standard will be, which we believe will be exactly what our product is, which is about 95% less nicotine. And if the U.S. does this, they won't be the first to do this, Frank. I mean, New Zealand has done it. Uh, New Zealand will be a, a low nicotine mandate starting in April of 2025. The EU also has uh, product standards for nicotine, but we feel we're perfectly positioned that when the FDA does announce this and ultimately implement, we'll be perfectly positioned to take advantage and really help and provide that, again, that 360-degree solution for adult smokers. All right, so the product's available here in California. Is it available in other states uh, as well at this point? Correct, uh, Frank. Right now in about 17 states. Um, California, again, we have it in 7-Eleven. We, we have it in 7-Eleven in you know, Florida, Texas, and California, the three biggest uh, states for cigarette consumption. Uh, we're also in Nevada. You know, we're in pretty much throughout the Sun Belt. 
So 17 states right now. And the best way to find a store near you is if you, if you go onto our, web, our website, tryvln.com or 22ndcentury.com, which is xxiicentury.com. Uh, we have store locators on there, and you can find a store. If you, if you shop at a 7-Eleven that currently doesn't carry it, please go in and ask them to order it because they can. It's in their system. Uh, but, yes, we're starting to get more and more distribution. Um, and, again, it's because it's catching on, because it's helping people, and it's providing that solution that they're looking for. Certainly a product that helps people smoke less. Again, it's VLN King Cigarettes, now available here in California. John Miller with 22nd Century Group. He's the president, Tobacco Division. Thank you very much, John, for sharing that important information with us here this evening. Well, thank you, Frank. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you very, very much, and a great uh, Labor Day holiday weekend as well. I'll be back again uh, tomorrow evening in the 5 o'clock hour. You can also bring up the Motac on Money podcast on demand at kbc.com, Apple iTunes, all your favorite podcast platforms. This is Motac on Money on 790 KBC. You want to buy a car or a house, travel, retire, but it's getting harder to figure out what's the best way to spend and invest. Afford Anything is a podcast that teaches you how to be smart with your money. Take the amount of money that you would make on that car payment, make that payment to yourself. That way, if you have to make a major repair, it can come out of that. And when you do go to buy your next car, who knows, maybe all five years worth of car payments have accumulated over that time. Afford Anything, wherever you listen.